Today I would like to talk about not very well-known fact, but nevertheless it's a very useful fact, which is called Stewart's theorem. So if you have a triangle like here, triangle ABC, and you have a segment BD inside of this triangle, Stewart's theorem allows you to relate the lengths of the segments in this triangle. So if we call the segments here A, B, C, D, E, in this case, these segments have a relationship written right here. When you look at this expression, you could say, well, this is crazy. I will never remember this formula. No wonder no one remembers Stewart theorem. But what I'm going to tell you now is, in order for you to use Stewart theorem, you don't actually need to remember it. All you need to know is that theorem exists and what it's about. And also you need to know how to derive it because derivation of this theorem takes like a couple of minutes, no more than that. And that's what we're going to do now. When you look at this triangle, ABC, you see that there are two triangles inside. There's a left blue triangle, ABD, and we have the red right triangle, CBD. Now, if you look at the angle D in the blue triangle, let's call this angle theta. In this case, the angle D in the red triangle will be 180 minus theta. And now what I'm going to do, I'm going to apply law of cosines to both of those triangles. For the blue triangle, law of cosines give us this expression. For the red triangle, law of cosines gives us this expression. So all we have to do now is somehow get rid of cosine theta. And that's actually easy to do if you remember one fact from trigonometry, that cosine of 180 degrees minus theta is equal to minus cosine theta. Now, if you're not familiar with this fact, there's a video below. But over here, we're just going to use this fact. And if we apply it to the second formula, that's what we're going to get. And now what we need to do is to multiply the top formula by B and the bottom formula by A and then add them together. In this case, cosine will go away and whole expression is going to look like this. And this is really it. This is our Stewart's theorem. If you want to obtain this expression, all we need to do is to notice that these two terms have a common factor of AB, and we're going to pull it out. And these two terms have a common factor of E squared, and we're also going to pull it out. If you do, this is what we're going to get. Now we're going to move this term to the other side and divide both sides of this expression by A plus B. And that's how we can get this formula. But in many cases, we don't really need this formula. It's sufficient to look at this formula because the last formula is only useful if you know A, B, C, D, and we are looking for E. But sometimes E may be known to you, and we would like to find something else. In this case, this formula or this formula would be more useful. This formula actually has two well-known consequences. First happens when this BD is actually side AC by sector or median. In this case, A and B are the same length. In this case, the expression simplifies, and that expression is called Apollonius theorem. The other important case is when BD is angle bisector. In this case, we need to know angle bisector theorem. That tells us that ratio of A to B is the same as the ratio of C to D. If we apply this formula to this expression right here, we'll get a very simple expression for the length of angle bisector. Where can we apply Stewart's theorem? Well, here's one example. We have a triangle, we have some segment inside of this triangle, we know four segments out of five, and we want to find the fifth one. This is immediate application of Stewart's theorem. So if we name our sides A, B, C, D, E as in the last example, we'll find that Stewart's theorem 
gives us this expression. As a, you can see, we need to find a. And to do that, we need to solve quadratic equation. If we do, we find two solutions. One is 0, the other is 5. Obviously, 0 doesn't work, so we have our answer. But obviously, you can say most people don't know Stewart's theory. And whoever comes up with the problems normally doesn't expect people to know Stewart's theory. So there got to be another way to solve this problem. And there is a way. So if you look at this problem again, we notice that triangle ABD is an isosceles triangle. In that triangle, we can draw an altitude BE, which happened to be a side AD bisector. So AE will be equal to DE and equal to A over 2. And the next thing we need to do is to consider this green right triangle and the yellow right triangle. And write Pythagorean theorem for both of them. So for the yellow triangle, Pythagorean theorem gives us this expression. For the green triangle, Pythagorean theorem gives us this expression. We are only interested in A, but we don't care about BE. So what we can do, we can take the bottom equation and subtract the top equation from it. If we do and substitute the values for B, C, D, and E, this is the expression we get. Notice what you have on the right-hand side is a difference of the squares. And we know a very useful formula how to deal with the difference of the squares. And if we apply it, this is what we're going to get. We get the linear equation, which we can easily solve and find a equals to 5. Now, for many people, this solution may look as prettier than the solution through Stewart's theorem. Stewart's theorem is a tool that you may have in your toolbox. Whether you're going to use it or not, it's a different question. But as a tool to know that such fact exists and to know how to actually get it quite quickly is actually a plus. It's never going to be a minus. If you have a geometric problem in front of you and you have all the time in the world, you can think about the prettiest and shortest proof that you can find. But the other situation when you are in a stressful environment of a test when you have a time limit. And you might not see those additional geometrical constructions that require you to find a pretty solution. In this case, just knowing that there is a Stewart theorem, knowing how to get it, may help you. Because at the test, all you normally care is to find an answer. It doesn't matter how you found or whether it's pretty or not.